Okay, this is just a brief wiring lesson to tell you how to use an external crystal. Okay. The pick oscillator frequency is good only to a few percent. If we use an external crystal, we can get a very precise result. All we have to do is wire that crystal to pin 9. That's the clock input, or CLKI, or RE7 pin. We're going to have to modify the configuration bits file. Uh, we have to change this one that outputs the internal oscillator frequency on pin 10 to this one, external crystal. There's not going to be any more setting of the uh, oscillator frequency. We're, the external crystal is only one speed. In our case, it's 8 megahertz. Let's look at the wiring diagram. Pin 9 is CLK on clock input. And spend a, just a little few minutes on the wiring of the crystal. The orientation, there's a little sharp corner of the pin. Okay. Uh, up here, this corner is wired to power. This pin is the signal pin, and it's going to go to ground, not the ground, to pin 9. Here's ground. To keep noise down, there's a little capacitor between power and ground. I'll show you this stuff on a, a couple of little videos of the actual device and board. Let's go to a sample project. In configuration bits, this is the line of code that we need to change to EC for external crystal. It would be a very good idea to have actually two configuration bits files one regular and one for an external crystal, just so that you know that and so that you can swap. You don't want to inadvertently use this one when you need to switch all your oscillator speeds. If we look in a program, something along this line, right? if you're using configure user, right? now we'd be operating at 8 megahertz. But in this particular program, nothing else would need to change. Hi, we're going to use an external crystal today. As I mentioned in the lecture, the pick that we use is only accurate to a, a couple of percent. Okay? And so you can cheaply buy an external crystal, an external oscillator, which is very, very, very precise. So the pick's good to a couple of percent. This is gives you four or five sig figs. Now, here I have the board to show you how it's wired up. There's a couple of things you should notice. If you're looking at this closely, you will notice that there's a sharp point on this corner. Okay? That's going to be important in orienting the uh, oscillator when we plug it into the board. We want to know where that corner is. Okay. It's got four pins. There are different pins. So when we plug them in, we have to make sure that it straddles the groove in the center of the board because all the pins have to be uh, connected differently. Also, to use this oscillator to keep the noise down, uh, we're going to use a little capacitor. I'm going to show you all of that in the rest of the lecture. I want to give you a good look at what the circuit board looks like when you have the external oscillator connected. In this corner right here, we've connected to ground, uh, not to ground, power. That's why I'm using a red wire, connecting it to red. In this corner, we've connected to ground. Between power and ground, there's this little capacitor in here. Adjust the legs so that it runs from the slot with power in it down one past this guy or two past it and 
connected over to ground. Our signal wire is right here, and it should run up to pin 9. That's uh, essentially all we need to do. Again, power to this guy, ground to this guy, the signal comes out here. This pin is not connected. We don't need to use it. There's a capacitor between power and ground, which is used to ever for reasons of noise. We don't want any more noise than we need. Capacitors usually are used that way. 